obviously I've grown up very much into the Western world, and I have a lot of morals that I've gotten from the Western world. One of those morals is that I don't mind sexuality, eh, homosexuality. Like I don't care. Do your thing. Mm-hmm. I've always had that, mm-hmm. and it's in my. It, it, it's been. It's been a belief, right? Like mm-hmm. genuinely, it's been a belief. Mm-hmm. So uh, I know religion is about learning about the truth and then also accepting it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't mind accepting that. I just want to know if there is anything that says why homosexuality is haram. Is there any, um, like like good reasons? Okay, well, I can give the good reasons now, but but okay. there is a very important thing to say. First yeah. thing is that homosexuality has a huge trajectory and changes in the Western. Uh, countries throughout history. If you go to 1960s, before 1960s, what they were doing to homosexuals in the UK, they were, they were literally hanging them in marble arch, literally, in the public. This is what they were doing to them. So what, why were they doing it is the question. Now, some people will say, oh, we, we became better, we changed, we learned, we advanced. That's the, that's the quote unquote, the argument that they make. But why, why were they doing it? Because they were following the Christian values, the, the, the Christian the, the, the clear cut texts that tell you what to do with these uh, individuals who engage in homosexuality, is written in the Old Testament. And that's something you cannot play around with and change. So that the Christian uh, Bible in the Old Testament uh, and the Christian Bible in general, even the New Testament, it completely condemns this idea of homosexuality or, or of a man engaging in intercourse with another man. Islam mm-hmm. is the same thing. We're talking now from a religious perspective. From a religious perspective, there's no doubt that Islam views this as a major sin. It is an abhorrent sin. We're not going to, we, look, we don't like uh, sugarcoat things. The way, the way what the Quran says is what the yeah. Quran says. I'm not going to like, Try to please someone's feeling. But we don't say, therefore, someone is not a Muslim. Like, even someone can become a Muslim and be homosexual, but he's going to be mm-hmm. committing a major sin. But that does not going to be, that it's not going to be something that takes him out of the fold of Islam. Uh, just like someone can still be a Muslim, and if he murders someone, does that, does, that does not mean that he's now not a, a Muslim. If he does uh, uh, ad- uh, adultery or fornication, he's still a Muslim, but he's committing major sins. If he drinks alcohol, he's committing a major sin, but he's still a Muslim. So that sin by itself does not take you out of Islam unless you believe that it's permissible. If you come and say, no, 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 it's okay to do it. Now you're going mm-hmm. against what the text is saying, and that will take you out of, out to, uh, of the fold of the religion. So that's a different story. So mm-hmm. from that aspect, we know the Quran is true. We know it's from God. So that, I would say, should be sufficient for any Muslim to accept this idea that why, why uh, Islam d- does not allow the idea of homosexuality. But if you were to think about it from just a purely rational perspective, is it beneficial for the society for them to community? Look, if we look at it from an atheistic perspective, for example, from a scientific perspective, uh, they claim, they believe in evolution. Uh, the predominant view in, in the scientific world is that they believe in the theory of evolution. And they say evolution is about survival and reproduction. Is it in, uh, for survival and reproduction to be men no, being with no. women? Uh, uh, okay, so from their worldview, from their scientific worldview, that's not a good thing. So. Now me, I'm just saying this is their worldview and this is what they believe. From your worldview, that's not a good thing. Yeah. Second thing is, are there uh, diseases that are mentioned in, uh, that are specifically linked to uh, uh, oh, homosexual yeah, intercourse that yes. are warned by, uh, not Muslims are warning by, but the, 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 the same countries, the governments that allow these things are the one warning from. Yes. For, for example, in the UK, you have the NHS, National Health Service. I believe they had they put like 13, around 13 uh, diseases that spread from a, a male-to-male intercourse, homosexual intercourse. And they put six, five to six, if I remember, from a lesbian intercourse, female to female. And why do they say these diseases comes from that specific type of intercourse? And I don't want to be graphic here. And maybe someone's eating food, so we prepared <laughs> for about to say, you know? But generally, because these, look, someone is having intercourse with another individual where that individual literally excretes. So that uh, place where you are having intercourse with that individual in, it's a place for out, not for in. That's number one. And number two, it's, not, it's a dirty place for the fact of it that it is a place where you excrete from. Literally, it is a dirty place where you cannot be doing intercourse in that, in that place. Thirdly, because it's not prepared for that, there's a lot of ruptures that happens when that type of intercourse takes place. And because rupturing happens and then bleeding takes place, then all of these uh, like uh, disgusting diseases come, come about. Also, that there's a lot of like, uh, I don't want to get more graphic, you know, but there is a lot of like, uh, like oral things that these people do, which that's why you find all of these diseases. That Islam does not allow these type of things, these type of behaviors that they do. So mm. what we say as Muslims is like, look, it's basic common sense. These things are causing uh, damage. And then when someone has an STD, it's not just him. That, that STD will spread in the community, will spread in the society to other individuals too. It's not going to stop at you as an individual. It will spread. And like a very common example that people know, uh, the, co- the monkeypox that spread in the U.S. And it, they were even warning just from touching the, uh, someone who has it because you can take the disease from them or, or their sweat or anything like that. So you have to stay away from the, those people. So you have now a communal, com- uh, on a community level, you have this uh, harm effect taking place. It's not just an individual 
perspective now, which we already spoke about. Mm. Now also you have this idea of like, uh, look, at the list is long. <laughs> you're asking me the reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a long list of reasons, basically. I can go on and on and on, but these people get offended. But for example, look, the pe- those people like, the, you want to say something? Yeah, so yeah I, I thought of one as you were speaking now, actually. And it's that it promotes, uh, the majority of it that I've seen, at least, and heard, it almost promotes uh, having multiple partners or, or doing it as a fun, th- uh, you know, like it becomes kind yes, of a yes, slut yes. thing, yes. slutty yes. thing. Yes. And and also you, you have the the uh, the idea that they don't stop at themselves. They they're spreading this in the in the community and society. It's not now that it's something that just you're doing, but you are also promoting it in your community and your society. You've seen these protests that they were doing, uh, like uh, where trans were coming from your, for your kids and all of these different things. They're explicitly saying it. They're not saying maybe you are, maybe you are. if you look at the UN, they had something that was called uh, the 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 law to do with the child, like قانون الطفل. That law to do with the child, it was all of them trying to introduce these type of values into our children. They're even trying to introduce it into the Middle East and these different countries. They're not just stopping at their own countries, let alone mm. their own countries, but they're going abroad. They're trying to enforce under the gaze of freedom and human rights and all of that. We can see their human rights today in Gaza, how they actually care about any children. 4,000 children killed, they don't even bat an eye and they tell you uh, we care about children. The reality is they were trying to push this disgusting rubbish on our children in our countries and in our societies. So the fact is, it does not stop there. There are many, many things and, and they adopt children. Those people who are homosexual, whether a man, a man or a woman, especially women, because they incline towards, uh, uh, they incline towards this uh, mother nature. They, they want children that gives them happiness. And then these children end up not having what they, uh, a, a natural growing in the end. Because we know like the biggest uh, number of criminals come from single parent homes. These single parent homes lack, lacks one of the things, either the, the nurturing and love from the mother or, or the, the discipline and the uh, teachings of the father. They lack one of these two things and their households are, are this. It's either it's going to lack one, one or the, it's going to lack the other. And an interesting study that was done that, that usually the, the, there is a high divorce rate in America that women do. But it's not only that women have a high divorce rate, it's even lesbians have a high divorce rate because it's not to do with the man, but women generally are like, are like this. And the interesting thing is, I think if you actually look and you study, you will see that this happens when they have a child. Because when they have a child, they realize that this other woman is not going to be able to protect and provide for my child. I need something else. I need now a man, an individual with a masculine energy that is going to be able to protect them and provide. Point is, look, all of these things that I'm, I'm mentioning, and as I said, I can give a long, never-ending list for the things that I can think about from a rational perspective, why this mm-hmm. idea is problematic. But look, you're not going to hear uh, someone who is, quote unquote, uh, a fake conservative telling you this information. So if you go to those fake conservatives like uh, Jordan Peterson, uh, Ben Shapiro, uh, <laughs> like Matt Walsh, all of these people are, quote unquote, fake co- conservatives. They just say, leave our children alone, but you can do what you like. No, Islam doesn't say leave our children. Islam says, look, there is right and there is wrong. And here is why this is right. And here is why this is wrong. Simple as that. Don't come from my child. Don't come from anyone. We don't allow these type of things that are in our religion. We don't allow these type of things in our tradition. This is how it works. Like we, we're not going to do anything to you. Well, look, let me make this explicitly clear. I'm not promoting for violence towards any group, the LGBT community or any, any other group. We don't promote for violence. We're not trying to attack any group, but simply we're saying our beliefs and why we believe it from an Islamic religious perspective. And we don't believe in, in violence. We believe in telling people what is right and what is wrong. And, and that, that doesn't mean we will force our, our ideas with violence. We don't believe in that. We don't force something onto someone else using violence. Mm. So because some people think now what I'm saying equals that now you can be violent or behave towards these people differently. No, I'll behave with them just like any other human being that I know. I will speak to them with love, with care and everything because I want guidance for them just like I want guidance for everyone else. Yeah, 